He's so fucking dumb. I'm going to guess that this is nothing. Or somebody compared it to The Last of Us at one point. Seems like most people are enjoying Resident Evil Village. It's actually getting good reception from the fans. And it's also, surprisingly, getting good reception from critics. Which means for one of the few times ever, audiences and critics agree on something. However, uh, That happens more than a lot of these guys like to admit. It's just that the games that the critics and the audience both like are usually, quote, too woke, unquote, games. There's always going to be something that they want to that they want to talk about. So we're going to go through some of those things. By the way, if you want to watch me play this game, make sure you follow me over on Twitch. You'll find a link for that in the description of this video. Don't bother. Watch anybody else. Literally anybody else would probably be more entertaining. Like the um, Achievement Hunter. They're doing a Let's Play of this on their streams. Go watch them. Michael is infinitely more entertaining than this guy ever will be. Now, Polygon, of course, is always the one to look at if you want to see some funny nonsense in their reviews. And why they gave this game a pretty decent review, as you can see here, Resident Evil Village, is the perfect cocktail of horror and action. And both will get your blood pumping. I'm actually surprised that they didn't complain about difficulty, but you know that all of these game reviewers played this game on casual. I guarantee you. By the way, I looked into this whole, like, oh, game reviewers they only play on casual. They're so, they're bad at games. That, com that comes from a Doom fucking reporter who got an early copy of the game who's not very good at the game who played it on normal difficulty and he made an ass out of himself, right? Here's the thing. He acknowledged he wasn't very good at shooting games because they weren't his specialty. However, he gave the game a fucking 8 out of 10. He called it amazing. But they acted like he caved in the game's skull with a shovel on in, during his review. He did not. But the narrative demands that game reviewers are out-of-touch losers who don't play video games. Unlike us, who totally play video games. By the way, they don't. Just look at my Mass Effect Legendary Edition controversy videos. None of these assholes play that game. But they all whined about it. 90% of the game critics that played this game played the game on casual. So they won't tell you that in the review. Citation needed. I think that they should. I think that they should, but they're going to play, yeah, we're real gamers. So you have no evidence that they played it on casual, yet you're making the accusation. Mm -hmm. Something a totally honest journalist would definitely do. We're gamers too. They play everything on, on casual or easy. And yeah, gamers play on casual and easy. Not every place, hard mode. And uh, good news for them, I hear that the PlayStation is, or Sony is going to implement some type of AI where it'll make boss fights easier. You know, journalists, they, they've been pushing for a journalist mode for a long time. But anyway... The only time I heard about that was a mode that would allow them to skip levels. Like, select a level, basically. What it was, that's all it was. Level select. So that they could play bits and pieces of the levels instead of having to play the whole game in one chunk because games have gotten to the point where 12 hours is considered a small game. And most of these reviewers get the game copy maybe a week, maybe a few days, maybe the day of the release. So they asked, could we get a copy that would allow us to switch levels get through the game a bit faster so that we can have a review ready for day of. Which does make sense, but it's a lot of work to put into a game just for reviewers, if I'm being honest. Although, it would be like nice for reviewers to get that kind of copy, but it's not going to happen. I have not heard anything of this. Well, they just want a game that plays itself for their special because they're, they're not good. I've never heard of any of this. There was some funny stuff in this review, mostly about Duke. It's not really a spoiler if you don't know, but Duke is the heavy set gentleman who sells you uh, recipes to create ammo and, and, and mines and some other things. You buy stuff from him. Uh, he is a very overweight gentleman, as you can see from the picture. Uh, this, of course, has had some problematic problematic things to it with some of these journals. They don't like that. It's, it's fat shaming. It's hurting people. People are going to be disgusted and offended by Duke. So this reviewer had to, quotations, put up with the with the character so that uh, they could, you know, get ammo. It's an enticing system that's unfortunately anchored to the game's worst character. The Duke is a boring, eye-rolling caricature of a fat person meant to cut through the tension of exploring all of those dreary locales. Most rooms he sets up shop in are decorated or fitted to highlight how fat he is. His stomach pops out of his clothes, revealing a bulging. 
desaturated pouch. He's constantly spouting lines like, to be hungry is to be alive. And as if that weren't enough health and defense upgrades come from finding and killing farm animals to turn into meals for him with his leftovers acting as my power-ups. As someone who struggled with weight for most of their life, I found the Duke betrayal a frustrating reminder that yes, people still see the overweight as grotesque. So I'm reading the bottom bit while he was still doing his stupid voice. Like, yeah, they just said it was it was good because the guns felt hefty. It felt great to use the guns and the mechanics. So yeah, this this was just a little personal aside. That's not unusual. All reviewers do this. They will comment on things they've happened to them in their lives during a review. This isn't slamming anything. And it goes on to talk about how uh, this person feels like they have to put up with this to play the game. Uh, that's not what it said. No, no, no. You go back. You lying sack of shit. Despite my issues, his wares and weapon upgrades forced me to put up with him. Each gun feels hefty, and while blowing a shotgun through the pelvis of an enemy hands feels good, the aiming isn't so precise that it seems mechanical or easy. Had to actively learn to aim these guns, whether it meant landing multiple enemies so I could pierce them all with a sniper rifle, or wrangling the aim assist so I could pull off consecutive headshots with a handgun. It's not complaining about this guy so much as saying, yeah, I put up with him because the game was so much fun and it was a challenge to put up with this to play the game. So I just found it funny, a big part. And also, there's a lot of reviewers talking about how Ethan's, of course, a generic white dude. Uh, we can go to everybody's favorite, Brianna Wu, for some highlights here. Uh, Ethan from Resident Evil Village is the kind of guy that loves Bitcoin and thinks women are just, just aren't that interested in computer science. Ethan voted for Ron Paul and thinks that the Diversity and Inclusion Committee at work is reverse racist. He's friends with HR, which is fortunate because three different women have filed complaints. They'll leave the company in the next year when they protect Ethan instead. Ethan is a nice guy who doesn't like it when women wear makeup, but makes sexist comments when they don't. He also feels that the pound M-E-T-O-O movement has gone too far because he's been accused of things seven times. Ethan also likes Dave Matthews. Anyway, I'm rooting for the witches to devour Ethan. It continues, by the way. There's one more big... Com um, that all sounds like jokes. Why is he taking this seriously? Point piece that I found kind of funny. And that's from... Like that sounded like a joke. What is he talking about? <laughs> that sounded like she was just mocking him for being, like, generic white dude. What the fuck is he whining about there? The gamer... He is generic white dude. Hell, fucking, what's his name? Jason Brody from Far Cry 3? He was more interesting than this guy. I actually gave a fuck about Brody. I don't give a fuck about Ethan. Mainly because he's a dumbass. He went through fucking Biohazard, and then he comes to this situation, and he's fucking confused? You know, you know shit's going down. Why are you so confused by this? <laughs> fucking, at least Brody knew when a tiger bit his arm, he had to solve that situation. Website, Resident Evil Village has an accessibility problem. Capcom did not even try to make Resident Evil Village accommodating. Now, I'm sure that they've got some kind of data to tell them what they need to put in, but I find it funny how these journalists know what games need. It's pretty much a whole article whining and complaining about the game. Wait, 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 wait. Did he just say? I'm sure they have data, but what do they fucking know? Well, if they have data... Yeah, also, why are you just skipping past all this? Let's talk about subtitles. Yeah, this is about subtitles, mostly. Wait, go back. Why do you skip over this whole thing? Wait, this is literally like, yeah, the HUD has very little in the ways of um, customization. Yeah, that's all this is. This is saying like, yeah, it had like no customization for people who may be colorblind. People who may not be able to see very well. There was no way to enhance it. And then comparing it to another game. That's all this was. And bringing up the fact that subtitles are subpar. This wasn't like, what? Purple whining and complaining Yeah, this is just like subtitles in the HUD are bad. He skipped past it so fucking fast. Fuck. 
And then it just shows this guy who's saying, like, yeah, subtitles are kind of shit. Which, yeah, at this point, it should be pretty standard that subtitles are, like, a standard. ...and complaining about the game not having... Like, this isn't even that bad. This is just like, yeah, the HUD has no customization for people who may be colorblind, and it has zero subtitle customization for people who may not be able to hear. And considering that this is based on Can I Play That, which is specifically dedicated to people who may have difficulties in playing these games for one reason or another. This is not unusual or out, of, out there. This is like standard shit. Does he, did he do zero research into this particular article before he read it? He didn't, by the way. He doesn't care. It fits his narrative, so he's going to present this as if it is like the big mainstream thing when this is really a niche. Yeah, see, this is all this. Look, this is what this is. Type in, can I play that? And I guarantee you, it's just this kind of thing. Where uh, they go over a video game and say, like, yeah, it has these customizations for this kind of um, medical issue. These kind of for this one. It's just, that's all this is. This is not like a mainstream thing. Uh, colorblind accessibility. And now I found that out by watching his video and stopping it so I could actually read the fucking article and the context just around this page. He couldn't take 10 fucking seconds to look up any of this. And that they didn't spend massive amounts of resources on how the subtitles are placed. For real. It's a real thing. Uh, subtitles also don't specify who is speaking. Completely missing the point altogether. Do you not watch anime? <laughs> like the subtitles just roll on the bottom, man. Like, what are you doing? And a lot of subbed anime, they will actually have different colors. Or, depending on who is speaking, it will sometimes be at the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen. But apparently they need to go up by the person or something. I don't know. I, I've, as someone who's read a lot of subtitles, what's the problem? I mean, this if you just have a bunch of subtitles, just plain white subtitles at the bottom of the screen, it's very difficult to understand what is happening on screen. Especially if you can't hear, which is what this article is addressing. People who may be deaf who want to play the game may not be able to understand what the fuck is happening because all they're seeing is random fucking sentences at the bottom of the goddamn screen. Like, I know these guys have zero empathy and don't understand other people's problems because they're fucking self-centered little fucking children. But this is like a legitimate concern to bring up, especially in the context of, yeah, we do articles for people who may have difficulty playing for one reason or another. The subtitles in this game are the same as they are in any anime, but, you know, apparently Capcom needs to have a revolutionary way to put subtitles on a screen? Okay. Man, if only they did what every other fucking game does and put who is speaking followed by the subtitles. Now, to be clear... Which is not revolutionary, by the way. It's how things used to work. Real quick, I think accessibility in gaming is fine. It's... I think it's fine. But I'm going to tell you why I don't like it. It's just... To me, it's just another example of these, these video game journalists showing that they're more activists than gamers. Right? That's what this all... This, that's what this says to me. See, you're not a real gamer because you want more people to enjoy the game you enjoy. How dare you say you're a gamer for wanting people to enjoy the game you enjoy. Meanwhile, this dumb fuck is telling people who cannot play this game for one reason or another to fuck off because it belongs to him and him alone. This is my niche. Get your own. This is my identity. How dare you? It's the same with the Dark Souls and the Warhammer motherfuckers. They don't want you in, your, in their hobby because it's theirs. It belongs to them and nobody else. And if you are not them, fuck yourself. If you want to get into these hobbies, you get into them. Don't let these motherfuckers stop you. They're not the boss of anything. Because, well, The Last of Us Part 2 was a pioneer. I like how he went right to this and ignored Ratchet and Clank. Right up here. Like the big highlighted one that they mentioned first. No, The Last of Us, because that's the fucking narrative. They hate this game. Because the white dude got killed, which was the only way his story was ever going to fucking end, by the way. He was never going to live a happily ever after. He was fucking dead. I'm amazed he survived the first game. Inaccessibility for gaming. So now it's going to be the gold standard, and every time a game comes out... You, you gonna address Ratchet and Clank up here? The game they also fucking mentioned several times? Out. If it doesn't have all these options, they're going to go after it. 
And it's just like, they're not going after it. They're just pointing it out. Like, you know, companies have limited time, limited resources for things. But Oh, I'm, wait, the FOV. They're mentioning the FOV as well. You know who else mentioned the FOV? Fucking Total Biscuit. He mentions it all the fucking time because it did affect people. Now, I don't think these guys dogpiled Total Biscuit when he brought up FOV. Mainly because he would destroy them. But I don't hear him mentioning this at all. Like, this that's what this whole article is. It's like, yeah, like these games did it so much better. Why can't they do this? Because he doesn't actually give a fuck. He cares about the narrative he has to push. I'm sorry, it doesn't it doesn't live up to the progressive standards of The Last of Us Part Two. Which is This has nothing to do with progressivism, by the way. This was literally like, yeah, they did it well in these two games, one of which he refuses to fucking mention. Why can't they do it good in these games too? It would take no time at all. And it would take no fucking time at all for most of these changes. Just funny. I just find it funny. Like this person liked all those features. I find it funny you pretend to be a journalist and can't fucking read in Resident Evil 2. Probably doesn't use any of them. But wants to write a whole accessibility hit piece on Resident Evil Village. It's not a hit piece. Because it doesn't live up to this dude's great time with very easy mode on The Last of Us Part 2. Every game is now going to be compared to that. Citation needed. And the way that it, it pushed those options. which I think I'd like to point out, Ratchet and Clank was also on this article. Why did he not mention Ratchet and Clank? It's kind of ridiculous. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Because the narrative... These guys are so fucking dumb. The narrative comes before all else, and it's fucking a fantasy. All reality does not matter because the narrative comes first. Fuck everything this article says. It doesn't matter. I can use it to push an agenda. It says The Last of Us in it. I can use it to push an agenda. They don't care. These guys are not gamers. They're not nerds. They don't care care. Stop pretending they give a fuck about these products, these IPs, these stories, these characters. They do not. This is a fucking political agenda to them. That's all they care about. Pushing their own agenda. Which is hilarious because that's what they claim everybody else is doing. If he cared at all about this game and other people enjoying this game and having as much fun as he claims to have playing it, He'd be all for these options because it would allow more people to come in and enjoy a game, which is what you want as a gamer. You want to share these experiences with other people. You want to, you want to be able to talk to them about them and share your stories about how you were low on ammunition, but because you got lucky with RNG or because you stumbled upon a secret, you turned the whole situation around and you managed to win against an insurmountable enemy. That's the kind of shit we love to talk about. And that's the kind of shit these guys never mention. It never comes up. Because all they care about is their fucking conservative agenda bullshit. These guys are not gamers. I reject their fucking... Their fucking um, label as a gamer. They are not. 